Joining us now on the MMA Fight Corner, UFC Hall of Famer and two-time welterweight champion, Matt Hughes. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Fantastic. So you're joining us right now to discuss the UFC International Fight Week that's returning to Las Vegas in July, July 1st through 6th. It's the third annual fight week, and this is going to be some kind of event. I know you were there last year. I had the opportunity to speak with you then. Uh, what events are you particularly going to be involved with this time around? Well, uh, I'm sorry to say that I haven't got my schedule yet, so I don't know what they've actually got me going in. I know I'm putting on a seminar with Chuck Liddell. We're putting on a two-hour seminar. But as far as that, I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing. But, uh, you know, the UFC is very good. When people walk in the Fight Expo, there'll be, uh, there'll be the times and the dates that people are in certain places. So it'll be easy to find uh, via web or via in person there on board uh, where everybody's at. And the growth of the UFC is absolutely incredible right now. I mean, on this weekend, we have two fight cards. From the time when you began your UFC career, did you ever imagine that it would come to this point where we're looking at an international fight week with two amazing fight cards? No, no, I, I didn't. Um, the growth has been tremendous. And I really got to feel back on uh, Spike TV and the Ultimate Fighter. Spike TV put fights on free TV. And then they had the ultimate fighter where uh, there was a little bit of drama mixed with a great sporting event, and people just loved it. So those two things really did huge things for the UFC. And, uh, you know, now ESPN covers this, and uh, Yahoo Top Stories are about the UFC. So, I mean, it's just amazing the PR we get nowadays. And, uh, all the, you know, it's, it's legal in every state in the country except New York. So, uh, and we're working on that. So, I mean, it's really... The sport has totally changed. Yeah, this is the fifth year the bill has gone and been voted on by the Senate there in New York, and it passed there yet again, but getting it to the assembly floor is something I believe everybody's pushing for. Uh, you're working with the UFC on a, a lot of projects since you've stepped away from being an active fighter. Do you have any involvement with trying to help out that bill getting passed through to the assembly? Uh, you know, they're, 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 they've got several guys that are actually doing that. I've been called up. I've traveled out there and fielded questions from anybody who might have any. Um, but, uh, like I said, the UFC has a team of lawyers that are, that are working on trying to get illegal there. And, uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, there's just some, some guys that just don't want to face the facts. And it's funny how the state can, will allow amateur fighting unregulated, but they won't have professional fighting come into town that is regulated makes no sense at all you were actually yeah. bringing up the ultimate fighter there and you had coached season two and also on season six and this season is being coached by bj penn who you've had three matches within the ufc and you guys have grown to be quite close uh and you're coming on to be a guest coach for him uh can you tell us a little bit about that experience yeah, he um, he just wanted to bring his friends on board, and uh, you know maybe I could teach his guys something a little different than he could. You know we're all so much different. So uh, so yeah, he said, hey, you want to come out? And I said sure, and uh, spent a couple of days with his guys, and they seemed to be talented. So um, so yeah, I was happy to do that. Come out there, and and I w I was actually pretty happy. I didn't spend you know a month and a half out there doing the whole show. Uh, it's just a lot of time to be away from the family here in Illinois. Right. I was curious. I mean, I know that you and BJ have become friends, but when did that start? When did the friendship really start budding? Because, you know, for those three fights that you guys had, I mean, they were pretty intense. Yeah, the friendship started after the third fight. So uh, okay. we didn't really have a friendship at all before that. But after the third fight, you know, uh, uh, we just, we just, the night of the fight, we were back in the back, and we were both getting checked out by the doctor, you know, the, the post-fight uh, checkout. And uh, we were just talking, and I said, hey, if you ever face a wrestler and you want some help, let me know. So he uh, a fight down the road with, with John Fitch, and uh, he called me up, and I flew out to Hawaii and trained him for a week for it. So we became very good friends after that. And we're a lot alike. We, got to, we both have the same sense of humor. That's great. 
I love hearing stories like that I mean, because the two of you are just ultimately really responsible for growing the welterweight, the lightweight divisions, because prior to both of you having really brought it onto the map, there weren't a lot of standouts for those divisions. So thank you for that. Oh, well, well you're welcome, Heidi. But I tell you, it wasn't really anything I did. I was just very lucky on the timing and when I got in the UFC and, and, you know, the beginning of the sport. Speaking of timing, you also were uh, teammates back when with uh, Robbie Lawler under the Pat Militich fighting system. And Robbie Lawler has a big fight coming up here at UFC 173. Of course, he's coming off of the, the loss to Johnny Hendricks for the title. What are your thoughts on his resurgence and what does he need to do in this fight to get past Jake Ellenberger? You know, uh, Robbie's extremely tough, you know, and hits hard. And good, great stand up, good wrestling. So, you know, if Robbie can keep it on his feet and and don't let uh, Jake win a you know a three round uh, decision, and if he can avoid a couple of those big punches from Jake, he's going to be fine. So, both those guys hit hard, and uh, you know Robbie just wants to keep it on his feet. Uh, if it hits the ground, I don't think Jake's going to be able to do anything but uh, but try and bo- and win a boring decision. So, I don't think that he'll do that. Uh, you know, just, he just needs to stay on his feet and throw those hard punches. He always does. Well, Johnny Hendricks is now the new champion of the UFC's welterweight division, and it's been, gosh, years and years since we've seen that title have a new owner. What do you think of Johnny Hendricks as the current champion? Great guy. Great guy to be in that, uh, you know, hold that belt in that weight division. So, uh, I'm very happy for him, you know. I always, you know, <laughs> I always kind of root for the wrestlers because that's that's who I am. When you when you wrestle, you kind of become family. So uh, I was very happy to see Johnny win that. You know, he's a Midwest guy from uh, Texas and, and went to school at Oklahoma there. So I was just real happy that that uh, down to earth guy uh, won the belt. And uh, you know, the belt's in the United States now. That makes me pretty happy. I'm a pretty patriotic guy. That welterweight division is completely like the Wild West right now, is how it's been referred to by a lot of people. Uh, with all that shakeup, I mean, how exciting do you think that is for, for fans to be able to see the changing of the guard, so to speak? You know, I think it's great, you know, and, and you know, the fans, they, they like that. You know, Canadian fans might not love it so much if they've <laughs> lost the belt, but... And, and I'm no disrespect meant by that comment, but you know when George stepped away, uh, all these welterweight fighters kind of sighed a little bit and said, "Hey, I can get this belt now." So it has really resurged the welterweight division, and uh, these guys know that uh, George isn't on top anymore. He's not there, so uh, so the belt, uh, you know, they're thinking is kind of up for grabs because he held it for so long. Do you think at this stage that with a second ACL injury that George St. Pierre will be able to come back and be in the same type of fighting shape if he does decide to come back? You know, I don't know what George's, the extent of his uh, injuries are, and uh, I really don't know what his mind frame is. So I don't know what he's going to do, but uh, I can tell you, you know, he did get beat up a little bit in that last fight with Johnny. And I would just question the fact whether he wants to go in there and fight anymore. You know, he's made a lot of money. He's got another movie contract on his plate right now. So, um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do with that. It all depends on what George wants to do, uh, not what everybody else wants him. Making the decision to step away from the fight game, I mean, that couldn't have been easy for someone like yourself. I mean, you are very, very competitive. But how did that decision come about for yourself, and what was the ultimate deciding factor for you? I'm I'm a competitor, and that's all I've ever known my whole life. And uh, my family and Dana White had a lot to do with the decision on my best interest. So... uh, so I follow the people that um, that have always made good decisions for me in the past, and, and, and that's how I came up with it. Now, would I still love to get in there and compete against the right opponent? I would. I would. I would definitely uh, love to do that. But uh, you know, I'm 40 years old now. I'll be 41 in October, and uh, at some point, you just got to call it quits. So you wouldn't actually entertain the idea of ever coming back? Because it seems right there that you maybe were considering it. Uh, well, 
Uh, if, if Dana White called me up and said, hey, uh, we're thinking about uh, bringing you off the shelf and coming and inviting somebody, would I think about it? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Would I be in trouble with my wife? Maybe. But uh, <laughs> I got to. If it, if it wasn't this, it would just be something else down the road. I should be on it before anyway. So, so, uh, so yes, I, I would think about it. But I just don't see that ever happen. Since you've stepped away from the game here, you've been pretty busy. I mean, you have a show called Uncaged that you're a part of. I, I've seen on your Twitter that you do a ton of traveling. Um, you're obviously doing a lot of things with the UFC as far as getting out into these different projects. Uh, doing all of those different things, I mean, does that kind of help to keep your mind off of it? Yeah, because uh, even it does got a, a show that's coming out on the Sportsman Channel. It's uh, Uncaged. It's a hunting show. Big game all across the world. Actually, just today, I came back from Africa on a 17-day safari. So that, uh, that's a big part of my life right now. And, of course, the UFC is, too. I'm going up to the Vancouver UFC and then out to 175 uh, for the International Fight Week. So they keep me busy as well, helping out in any way I can, whether it be going to a fight or going to the State uh, Athletic Commission fielding any questions a lawmaker might have on the safety or anything else with the UFC. So, uh, you know, yes, being busy with the UFC is, is, is keeps me, uh, my foot in the game. So I, I enjoy that as well. Well, Matt, we'd like to thank you so much for your time and joining our show. Again, Matt Hughes will be a part of UFC International Fight Week that's returning to Las Vegas July 1st through 6th. Uh, we know that you'll have a seminar. Hopefully soon uh, people can go to UFCFightWeek.com and find out more about the events and where they can find you if they're interested in any signings or Q&A type sessions. Well, yes, Heidi, you're exactly right. So uh, uh, if you want to talk when I, when I come out there, just let me know. We can do it in studio or if you're setting up a, a booth or something. Just let me know. And I and, uh, love talking to the fans. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I would really enjoy that. And thank you again so much for your time. We appreciate it.